Well, hello everybody. How are you doing? <laughs> Been a while since I talked to you. Let's see. I think it was last Thursday or Friday. Today is uh, Sunday. Got home late last night. Uh, spent five days down in Dallas, two days in Louisville, a little travel time in there. Uh, I had a great, great time. Got to spend a lot of time with my son in Dallas. Got to hang out with Lynn Lacey at his shop for a couple days. Um, we had some successes and we had some failures, but we learned an awful lot from one another. So it was a great, great trip. Let me show you guys some of the stuff that, uh, that I came home with. Right off the bat, I wanted a new pin press. So I purchased one of these Miles Craft pin presses. Uh, I bought this from the Woodworking Maniac store. I actually bought it when I was down there visiting Tim a couple of weeks ago and uh, he had to order it for me. It just came in, so when I was in Louisville, I went and picked it up. I'm really excited about this. Been wanting one of these for a long time. While I was in Lynn's shop, Lynn hooked me up. Let's talk about a couple of things. First off, this is a piece of Texas Mesquite Burl. It's uh, just basically a piece of scrap wood from a box he was making, and we put it into liquid diamond resin, and we added a little antique red to it. Uh, Lynn has a video out on this, uh, I'll be turning this into a, a pen. Lynn is going to turn a pen from it as well. And we'll have a kind of a small collaboration video. This was fun to do. I learned an awful lot about casting and uh, really, really enjoyed making this. Here's a couple of blanks Lynn had laying around and gave to me. Uh, this is a nice blue blank. Uh, I'll use this hope hopefully to make some thin blue line pens. That's what I'm hoping. Here's a black blank that he gave me and another blue blank. So we're going to find a lot of uses for those. He also had these pins, these, whoa, almost dropped them. These are some comfort pins. And uh, he said he just didn't really care for the pins. It looks like there's a, a pencil in there as well. Uh, a couple pins and a couple pencils. And he didn't really care for them, so he gave those to me. And I'll turn those uh, into something really cool. I got two of these small rockler clamps and two of these large rockler clamps. And Lynn gave those to me as well. Uh, they were some extras that he had. Rockler had sent them to him and he used a number of them, but he had a couple extras. The reason he gave those to me is my big purchase while I was down there, and I am so excited. I bought the Incra sled. Um, it was on sale. I got it at Rockler. We went to the Rockler down there. Great store, great people. The sled is on my desk at work. It arrived last week. I'll pick it up tomorrow. I am so stoked about this sled. It takes the place of my crosscut sled, my 45 degree miter sled, my reverse 45 degree miter sled, my small part jointing sled, uh, and uh, we were gonna make another sled, another sort of a small part jointing sled that would allow me to hold my little cutoffs and cut them at 30, 60, 45, uh, 90 degree, whatever angle I want it. The sled's gonna do that. So the reason I bought it is we got to looking and I was gonna end up spending, by the time I bought tracks and birch and everything, about 150 to maybe $170 uh, for parts to build a sled. And then Lynn and I had to build it. On sale, they had this Incra sled for 200 and uh, I think it was $240 maybe or 260. I don't remember, but it was like $100 more than I thought I was gonna spend. And I thought, you know what? I can throw these other sleds away. This thing is touted for its, its accuracy and you can set an angle and change the angle or something else and supposedly come right back to that angle and have dead on accuracy. So I'm really excited about having that in my shop because I've been needing to build some picture frames. I've been wanting to get into building a few boxes and this is gonna give me the opportunity to have those perfect repeatable cuts to be able to do that. So I'm really psyched about that. Also, while I was at the Rockler store, let me show you a couple of other things I picked up. I bought a table feather board. This was, I believe, on sale for 10 bucks. These are great if you're running stock through your table saw using a fence. This helps keep it against the fence. Um, so I'm really excited about having that. I bought some spare tubes. I've actually already used one of them. These are 27 64 So these are the same uh, diameter tube that you would use for, um, say, a Sierra or a Wall Street or a Manhattan, which is the other thing I bought. I bought six of the Manhattan tubes, or I'm sorry, Manhattan pin kits, which are, you know, Wall Street Sierra style pins. I'm really liking this style kit, so I've been making a lot of them. So that was a lot of fun. While I was in Louisville, I went to the car show and I met John Barnes. He's been following my channel for a while. Really cool guy, and he made these blanks for me. This is Mopani in Alumalite, and this is cut up pieces of construction paper 
that he put in Alumalite. So I'm really anxious to turn these blanks. They are, they look awesome. Uh, John and I spent the better part of probably an hour and a half just chatting at the show. Really enjoyed talking with him. We shared a lot of ideas. He's a great guy and I truly appreciate him making and giving me these blanks. And also, my mom and dad, <laughs> boy, they always take care of me. They hit the garage sales on Saturdays. It's just fun, something fun to do. And uh, they picked up a couple things for me. Check this out. My dad picked me up another tripod. I always like to have tripods around because you knock them over and break them. He paid a dollar for this at a garage sale. All the parts are there, including the, the uh, quarter inch by 20 threaded screw. And this, look at this. Can you see that price? $40.95. This is Merca. Let me get a focus in on that. Merca sandpaper. It's in strips, but that's not an issue. Look at that. One dollar at a garage sale. This is uh, 180 grit sandpaper. That is awesome. That whole box. I don't know how many sheets are in there. Uh, I'm not sure. It doesn't really say. But that whole box. I mean, you're looking. Look at that. That that is well over an inch thick, and that's going to be great. That will definitely get used. I forgot to mention that while I was at the car show, I picked these up. These are red strips of LED lights. Uh, I told you a while back that I bought some new LED lights. They are driving lights, stop lights, and uh, flashers or blinkers for my trailer because I want to replace the lights on them because they're just wore out and they, they sort of work and they sort of don't. They're kind of kind of iffy. And what I want to do, these have an adhesive on the back and I want to stick these to the trailer. Uh, at, you know, on the back of the trailer at the bottom and tie them into the brake lights so that when I hit the brakes, they go off too. So if there's anyone behind me, um, it'll give them just a little extra light because I always worry with those lights being out on the side of the trailer. If you've got a load on there, somebody can't really see well from an angle. So just hoping to kind of, you know, hedge my bets on that. Uh, my kids took care of me. They know I love my Cardinals and my sticker on my car was all faded out, so they picked me up some new window stickers. They were in Gatlinburg all week with my wife, so they were having a great time. Um, right before I left, the Thursday before I left, I swung by the Habitat for Humanity store, and they had this for $1. I checked it out, none of the drawers are broken. It's not warped or anything. It's, it's in great shape, no cracks, nothing wrong with it. Look at that, $1. This is going to be great for, I don't know, small pin parts, nuts, bolts, whatever I want to put in it. So I'm really, really psyched about that. And then when I got back from my trip, after all of that awesomeness, I go to the P.O. box and Ron Parrott has sent me a care package. And let me show you what Ron sent me. This is truly awesome. Look at this wood. And he went and marked everything for me. That is Red Shade Cocobolo. He sent me a little bit of uh, Spalted Maple Burl. That's some Bacote, beautiful wood. This is a little bit of uh, dark Cocobolo. I've got uh, some Honduran Rosewood. Look at that, is that not awesome or what? I can't wait to turn that one. That is a little spalted maple. Stabilized as well, so that'll be good. It'll hold together real well. Got a little bit of lace wood here, or leopard wood. King wood. And this is some African black wood. Thank you, Ron Parrott. I appreciate it. I am going to get some gorgeous pins out of that wood. I cannot wait to start turning it. One of the things I want to do tonight while I'm in the shop is I, I got to kind of get cleaned up a little bit. Mike Fulton from MF Woodshop is coming over tomorrow. Uh, after work, maybe about 5, 5.30, he's going to swing by the shop and just hang out for an hour or two. I think we're going to go grab a bite to eat. He's on his way through uh, to Louisville, so I'm looking forward to that, and I need to get I got to kind of pick up a little bit because the shop's in bad shape and we'll probably come out here and hang out a little bit and I don't want it to be where we can't move, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to clean up the shop just a little bit and then I'm going to get organized for what pins I want to start turning this upcoming week. And if there's any time left, I've got a special project I'm working on. It's, it's one that uh, I can't tell you guys about just yet. Um, I will when I can but it's a gift and I don't need the person to know about it. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, one more thing, special projects. You guys remember these. And you're thinking, oh man, you didn't turn them or you didn't mold them? Okay, there's a huge story about this. I got down to Lynn Lacey's. These are all 27 64 inch tubes. They are set up for the Wall Street pins. Right before we started casting them, we got to looking, Lynn pulled out the bushings 
there's not enough clearance because the Wall Street does not, I don't know if you've ever taken a look at the bushing, they don't leave a lot of wood. It's, it's maybe one sixteenth of an inch. So our concern was if we molded those uh, in the alumilite or in the uh, liquid diamond, uh, that when we turned it down, the tool would hit the bottle cap and it would basically ruin the pin. So we decided, hey, let's make another one. So we made two more of these blanks while we were in, in Lynn's shop and we put one bottle cap on each. We painted them a color that was complementary to the cap. We moved the cap down the tube so that the ends of the tube could be close to the bushings, a nice fit, but it could kind of be a little bit convex or you could allow for a little more material to make the, um, to make the bottle cap work inside the blank. We got it all, we got them made, got them painted, got them glued up, put them in the mold. We then put the mold, we put uh, liquid diamond in the molds, clear liquid diamond. We put it in the pressure pot and Lynn had an older mold. I think it's silicone based. It's not the newer pink molds, it was a blue one. The pressure pot, I think the pressure pot squeezed the mold. It caused the mold to kind of flex a little bit. Uh, when it did, it pushed the the mold in at the ends of the tube, which pushed the resin in, so you had the tube all real rough at the end. You could still see the tube. Uh, and I had a couple of bubbles that came out from under one of the Coke or the uh, bottle tops. So we are doing another set of them. I gotta get busy on those. I'm gonna make another set, send them down to Lynn. He's already ordered new um, molds. And we're going to do this again. We both love this idea. We want this idea to work. We just need to give it one more shot. Uh, it's the old college try, man. If, if at first you don't succeed, you know, try, try again. And that's what we're doing. We're giving it our best effort. We are going to make it work. We are going to have pins out of it. It's just a matter of we're figuring out all the tiny little bugs. And I will let you guys know when I do the video, I'll explain all this. So if you're looking to make some of these, don't start making them yet. Hold on a little bit. Let us get them turned and let us explain to you what the issues were so that you can make them perfect the first time. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot. But uh, that's pretty much everything I've got right now. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go for a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of organizing. I'll come back at the end, uh, let you know what happened, and I'll show you anything I got set up for the upcoming week. Um, I'll show you guys a quick peek at that. I'll be back. Well guys, I got the shop clean and presentable and I've got a couple of projects laid out over here. Let me show you kind of what, what I got. Starting over here, that's just some scrap wood I use. These are some items I have to work on. I gotta get my weed eater going, uh, a screw fell out of it, uh, working on a tripod, a couple of odds and ends, come around the corner there. That's just my vacuum system for uh, dust collection. I've got this table cleaned off. Uh, that's still a little messy, but that'll always be messy until I sort it. There's my AC right there. Over on this side of the shop, I have got the lathe table cleaned up. Uh, I need to find a place to put those. That's all my bushings and small parts. I got the top of the router table cleaned off. Let me shut that off. So come around. You can see I've got the floor nice and clean. Uh, I've got everything. Those are getting ready to go on the trampoline once the rain stops. That needs to go up to the loft. Here's, uh, let's see. This table is pretty good. These are the blanks I'm going to be working on. I'm going to paint these tubes tonight so that we can uh, start working on uh, the uh, bottle cap blanks again. I just got everything kind of cleaned up and neat, and I'm really happy with, with how it looks. So that's pretty much it for me for tonight. Uh, I just got notified that dinner is ready, so I'm closing down the shop. I'm shutting the doors, turning the lights off. I'm going to go and have a little bite to eat and uh, edit this video for you guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow night. Take care. Bye-bye.